If you have a shotgun for defending your home, it should probably be loaded with buckshot. I've already done a video all about choosing buckshot for your home defense shotgun, but that's been almost five years ago now, and it was kind of short. I wanted to revisit the topic and fill in some of the details I left out before. This is gonna be a pretty deep dive because buckshot is a surprisingly complex topic. There are a ton of options out there, and more than any other type of firearm, ammo selection for shotguns is critical for making sure the gun does what we want it to do. If you're watching this because you just want an easy recommendation for buckshot to put in your home defense gun, I'll save you the trouble of sitting through the whole thing. Just get a few boxes of 12 gauge Federal Flight Control 8 pellet double aught buckshot. It works great in almost any shotgun and it makes one big fist size hole out to at least 10 yards. There are other good loads out there, but it's hard to go wrong with flight control. Now do me a favor and go buy it from luckygunner.com because my kid is gonna need braces soon. Okay, if you're still with me, I'm assuming that means you want to know more about the why behind that choice. So I'm gonna be going over just about everything you could want to know about using buckshot for self-defense. I'm splitting this one into two videos. I've got three main points to cover today and I'll do the other three in part two. One more quick thing before I get into it. I don't usually do this, but there is a question that comes up fairly often and it's a valid one. Who is this guy and why should I listen to anything he has to say? He looks like he might even be a vegetarian. What could he possibly know about shotguns? I actually wish people would ask this more often, especially when they get their gun information from YouTube. I am nobody special. I'm employed by luckygunner.com to provide information that is useful or at the very least entertaining for our customers and potential customers. To that end, I have received roughly 700 hours of professional firearms training over the past several years. About 100 hours of that has been shotgun specific training, including classes with Rob Hot, Daryl Bolke, Randy Kane, Tim Chandler, Ashton Ray, and the Range Master Shotgun Instructor course with Tom Givens. Now, I certainly don't claim to speak for any of these instructors, and there is gonna be room for disagreement with some of the ideas I'm about to bring up, but I believe strongly in an evidence-based approach to studying these issues. So if I say something that sounds maybe a little off to you, I very well might be 100% wrong, but I hope you'll consider the fact that I probably didn't just make it up out of nowhere. It's either based on something I have observed or something I have learned from people who have a whole lot more experience with this stuff than I do. Also, I am not a vegetarian. With that out of the way, let's start with the non-controversial stuff. The first thing you should know about buckshot is that there are a lot of different types and they are not all created equal. That probably goes without saying if you've been around shotguns for a while, but not everybody knows that. Buckshot varies in terms of the length of the shell itself and the number, size, and velocity of the pellets in that shell. Ammo makers also have a variety of different methods of trying to control the spread of the pattern. And that's something we will come back to in part two. First, let's break down those other attributes. By the way, just assume that I am talking about 12 gauge for most of this. There's nothing wrong with 20 gauge in theory, but it has just a fraction of the market support that 12 gauge does. There are not many purpose-made self-defense loads for 20 gauge, so our focus here is on 12. Okay, shell length. There are four common sizes, two and three quarter inch, three inch, three and a half inch, and recently we've been seeing more of the one and three quarter inch mini shells. The two and three quarter inch shells are standard. There's normally not any good reason to use anything other than a two and three quarter inch shell for self-defense against humans. They are plenty sufficient for that job. The mini shells don't feed in most shotguns. You can only use the three and three and a half sh inch shells if your barrel explicitly says it is chambered for them. Those longer shells will give you more velocity or more pellets. That might be useful for larger animals or for extending your range. But for the average person, that's not really necessary for personal protection in and around the home. Shell length is determined by measuring the shell before it is crimped. A loaded shell out of the box is a little shorter, so if you pick up a two and three quarter inch shell after it's fired, it will measure right at two and three quarter inches. When it's unfired, it will actually be closer to two and a quarter inches if it's got a star crimp like this one. If it's roll crimped like this one, it'll be more like two and a half inches. That means for some shotguns, you won't be able to fit as many shells in the mag tube if they are roll crimped. You might only fit 
four shells in a five shot tube. Most shells designed for self-defense are star crimped to maximize your capacity. Shot sizes. The smallest buckshot is number four buck, not to be confused with number four shot, which is birdshot. The largest I've heard of is four aught buckshot, but triple aught is the largest common size. The most popular size by far is double aught buck, especially for self-defense. It's been the gold standard for law enforcement for many decades. Number one and number four buck are also fairly common. Each pellet of double odd is about 0.33 inches in diameter. Number one is 0.3 inches and the number four pellets are 0.24 inches. Number of pellets, that is gonna vary depending on the size of the shot and the length of the shell. Two and three quarter inch double odd buckshot comes with either eight or nine pellets. Occasionally you'll see a 12 pellet load. Number one buck usually has 12 to 16 pellets. Number four will have around 21 to 28 pellets. Velocity, like I mentioned, some of the three and three and a half inch shells will push the pellets faster, but even among the two and three quarter inch shells, the velocity might vary quite a bit. For self-defense loads, that window is typically between about 1100 and 1600 feet per second out of a manufacturer's test barrel. So how much velocity do you need for self-defense? Well, it depends. The loads around 11 or 1200 feet per second are often labeled as low recoil, and they are a bit easier to control. Low recoil double aught buck has been very popular with law enforcement since the 80s or 90s, and it seems to be just as effective for close range encounters as the higher velocity stuff. Just be aware that certain semi-auto shotguns won't cycle reliably all the time with the low recoil loads. At roughly 11 to 1200 feet per second, double aught will penetrate 18 to 20 inches in ballistic gel, which is more than enough. If you push the same double lot pellets 33% faster at 1600 feet per second, you are probably gonna end up with over penetration. They're also more likely to penetrate exterior walls and other hard barriers. Number one buckshot also does really well in that 11 to 1200 foot per second range. That gets around 15 to 18 inches in gelatin, which means it's not as likely to pass completely through a human target. Honestly, number one buckshot is really more ideal in a lot of ways than double aught from a ballistic standpoint, and it has just as good of a success rate with law enforcement. Unfortunately, number one is not as popular, so market demand is very low, making it hard to find good loads with that shot size. Number four buck is where you might want some extra velocity. Each number four pellet has about half the mass of a number one pellet, so if it's moving at the same velocity as the number one, it's probably going to under penetrate. So most of the number four loads are a little faster at like 13, 1400 feet per second. And even then they are just on the very edge of adequate penetration, at least anecdotally speaking. I've heard of plenty of success stories with number four, but I also know of a couple of failures to stop that probably would not have been failures if they had been with double odd or number one buck. At close range, inside a home with nothing between the gun and the threat, it's probably gonna be fine. I could see number four buck being a decent choice if you're in an apartment or a townhouse or something like that and you want to minimize penetration through walls. It's still gonna go through at least a couple of interior walls just like anything else that will reliably stop an attacker. It just might not go through all of the walls in your apartment building. So don't miss. And that brings us to the number two thing you should know about buckshot. You have to pattern your buckshot. Patterning just means that you fire a couple of rounds at various distances to see what that load does in your gun. The goal is to find out how much the pellets spread at any given distance. So think about the area that you might have to defend from people or animals or whatever. Find the longest possible shot you might have to take. Think in terms of potential lanes of fire, not just the size of a single room. So inside your house, that might be from the back of a bedroom, down the hall, through the kitchen to the back door. So pace off that distance and then add a couple of yards just to be on the safe side and use that as your maximum distance. Start patterning your buckshot at about three to five yards and then repeat the process at three to five yard increments until you reach that maximum distance. That way, you know exactly when that shot starts to spread and how big the pattern is gonna be. The key is predictability. You have to know how your buckshot behaves and every barrel is a little different. So you have to pattern it in your specific gun. So what kind of pattern do we actually want? That is the third thing you need to know about buckshot. A small pattern is usually better. And by small, I mean 
less than about five or six inches across at your maximum distance, maybe even less than that if possible. For one thing, the terminal ballistics are better when the pellets all impact the same general area at once, but the main advantage of a small pattern is shot accountability. We are accountable morally, ethically, legally for every projectile that leaves that barrel. The wider the spread, the greater the chance that even a good center hit is gonna result in at least one or two pellets that miss the target completely and hit something we did not intend to hit. Unless you live alone and you don't have any neighbors that's not acceptable. Tim Chandler, who teaches some excellent shotgun classes, has often pointed out what I think is a perfect illustration of the problem with wider patterns. When they start picking up the pace in their classes, most people's accuracy suffers a little bit. That's pretty normal in any class, but the students with the wide patterning buckshot will often struggle to keep all of their pellets on the target. Even if they miss just a little bit, if their shot goes a little high, they'll have half the pellets on the target and half of them will miss the paper completely. The students with the tighter patterning buckshot will make some of the same aiming errors and they might have pellets hit where they didn't quite intend, but the whole pattern will be on the target. They'll still be hitting the threat somewhere with every pellet. The way Tim puts it is that even though it's counterintuitive to the way we often think about shotguns, a wider pattern means you have to be more or less perfect with your mount, your sighting, and your trigger control. A tighter pattern is more forgiving of some small mistakes in your shooting technique. Now, I'm not saying you need a three inch pattern at 20 yards if the maximum range in your place is like five yards. It's context dependent. The greater the maximum potential distance is, the more that shot spread becomes a major liability. Now, not everyone agrees with this approach to shotgun ammo selection, and there are definitely some different ways of looking at it. I think I can predict at least two or three of the common objections, like isn't the whole point of using a shotgun so you have a better chance of hitting your target with a wider pattern? Or if you want such a tight pattern, why don't you just use slugs? Or for that matter, why not just an AR or some other carbine? All very good questions, and I will do my best to answer each of them in part two one week from today. Don't miss it.